All right, gang. Here's another set of engines I purchased in the early 80s for my layout. This was a powered and non-powered unit. This, when I bought it, I paid $14.99 for it, probably $80.81. And when I saw it, I, I wasn't, as I said in our earlier video, I wasn't into, you know, what understanding or knowing what engines were and who made them and all that. But these, I think, are called FMs. Don't know what it, what that is. Uh, these engines, they pulled good. I just, I like them. I'll never get rid of them, but they were just not what I thought they were going to be when I bought them. And so I just ran them every now and again. Now, the the A or the powered unit, the coupler is missing on the front, and the B or the dummy, the coupler is missing off the back. I, I don't know what happened to them. I don't recall taking them off. But the good thing about it is each K, uh, each uh, plastic piece that holds the engines came with extra couplers, so I, I can replace them. But these did the, this engine did run good. The, it was a it, it was strong. It pulled well. Um, if you notice, the numbers on each engine, the A and the B, are the same numbers. <laughs> I think I mentioned in a previous video. I think with my Burlington Northern Bachman engines that. Uh, all the road numbers for every box car was the same. Well, and it, here's this case here, you know, it's a low budget hobby of mine when I was a kid, because, you know, I had to earn my money. It, my parents just didn't take me to town and buy me stuff like that like, cost this much money. Of course, it doesn't sound much now, but, you know, back in the 80s, $14.99 for a toy train was crazy when you could buy a whole train layout back then for like 20 bucks. They came with track and box car, gondola, another car like a flat car or a hopper and a caboose. But yeah, these these AHM engines, I was impressed with them. They they pull really well. Now, something I didn't care for, and it was like I don't know if it was all of them were made like this or not, but the Santa Fe decal on the hood is water transfer, which is okay, but it wasn't ever really sealed to the body. And the one on the power unit is kind of like peeling. So let me let me flip them around so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, here's the front A B. Let me zoom in a bit here. And you see, there we go. See how the decals they're just rubbing off. It's, it's like when it was put on, they never sealed it with any anything. Which is okay as well because you know these are older engines and it does give it the look of use. So I mean I'm more than happy with it. Just like I said, these are these are never going anywhere. I uh, like them, like them a lot. They'll uh, just stay with me with my set. All right, now here's the back. You know, just as I said, neither one of them are damaged except for the the couplers. They're damaged on, as I said, the, the B unit on the rear, the A unit on the front. Now, I'll say this. Even though these are one of my favorite engines I've bought, they sure did look good running on my layout. I mean, it was just something about them, seeing an A and a B running together. It was, you know, the B... If I recall correctly, no lights or nothing. It's just a shell with wheels. But again, it was a good. It's a good train. It's a good loco. It performed well, and it, and as of you know, the last time I ran them, which was a couple years ago, just to keep them going and clean them up, it ran perfect. No hesitations or anything. But this is the AHM FM. I believe is the right thing, right name for them. A and B unit. Appreciate you guys viewing this. Uh, talk to you later.